take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Please check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couples Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couples Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for over 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. So on today's episode, you know, the topic that we are going to be talking about, it actually came up during a podcast that we were recording with a couple. Yeah. And uh, it's a great story that'll be aired in probably a couple of weeks. But he asked us, you know, tell us about this weekend intensive and is it something you would do if you're a healthy couple? Right. Right. Because he had, he was under the impression that only couples that are having problems in their relationship should work on it or should seek out our services. Right. And, you know, we hear that. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Because there is quite a stigma when it comes to seeking help for your relationship. And not seeking help because there's something wrong, but seeking help to grow and to improve. Right, and be better. And to be better. Yeah. It's so funny to tell people we meet what we do. <laughs> yeah. And they're always either like really interested or like, yikes. <laughs> yeah, that's always uh, awkward when they think we are analyzing them or something like that. So before we get into this topic, yeah, uh, last week was our 160th episode. Yes, it was. And we have... Over 70,000 unique downloads on the podcast, which is so amazing. Yes, that has really been such an accomplishment for us, you know, doing this for, we've been recording for three years, this podcast, and it, we hear from lots of people that are listening, how much it's helping them in their lives, and that was the point, and we love that. You know, there's, there's something you never mention, and that's our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. And our YouTube channel, if you subscribe to that, you will get the notifications for not just the podcast, but when we do the live episodes uh, that's done through Facebook and YouTube YouTube Live, you can interact with us during those times. So if you subscribe, then you'll be able to get the notification of when we're going live. Yeah. And you can interact with us. You can ask us any questions you might have, any feedback. And we've been doing that since um, October, last October, yeah, yeah, I believe. So if you are out there and just listening to our podcast, you can tune in and interact with us when we go live uh, on Facebook and YouTube as well, which is which has been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun interacting with people, participating, and you know, talking about these different topics about relationships. When you do a podcast, you sit in a room kind of by yourself. For us, it's with each other. And you kind of speak out into the ethers. And you don't get much feedback. But we have had some great testimonies or reviews reviews for the podcast. Right. So if you, if you do listen to the podcast, please leave us a review so we know that you're listening and that you know we've reached you. But now we're going to share something really special. Because after a weekend intensive... We got uh, several really incredible testimonies, and we are going to play some clips from that for you now. You have a whole weekend, no phone, which is great, no distractions, and you, you are able to focus and put all your attention, all your energy towards your partner. We have a toolbox 
filled with tools that we plan to bring home and pull out. Dr. Ray and Jean make you feel very comfortable in talking about your emotions, your feelings. It does change your life and it will change your marriage too. And they set up so many exercises, so many opportunities to um, just to kind of give you that nudge to push you in that direction to have those conversations. Both of them have this gift of like gently taking our hands as couples and as a group and saying, okay, come with me, this is safe. I won't leave you here alone. In my breakout sessions, which are super helpful, we get to share things that most guys never discuss. And so to be able to have that kind of peer connection was excellent. Like Dr. Ray said, I mean, if it's if it's comfortable, um, then you're not growing. But if it's uncomfortable, then that's a place where, that we can become a better couple. If it does feel scary to come to a weekend intensive, it's supposed to, right? It's part of it. It's part of growth. And it's part of developing something new in your, yourself and in your relationship together. I think it should be mandatory. You know, as Ray and Jean say, they, it's not taught, but yet it's the most fundamental piece in society for, for a healthy society. And we just don't get taught. Just give it a chance. Um, it, it's amazing um, the places that they can take you, the conversation that you didn't know you needed to have. I definitely encourage them to come because there's a lot to learn and there's not a thing to lose. You know, I can't imagine our energy, our time, our resources being better spent doing anything else. I don't think there's anything that we can't get through. So that was really awesome. We really loved getting that feedback because it just let us know that the work that we're doing is impacting people's lives for the better, which is the whole point of having this podcast, the whole point of being able to work with couples personally and help them transform their, their relationship and grow together. And the weekend intensive was amazing because we were actually able to be there in person with people. Mm -hmm. And we have another weekend intensive that is coming up, and we'll be doing these uh, weekend intensives twice a year. Uh, the next one is September 9th through the 12th. We're, instead of the, the registration that was done before, what we're doing is a, uh, is a screening meeting. Mm -hmm. And that would be set up with the two of us mm -hmm. personally. And we would be able to answer any questions that you, you have and make sure that the weekend intensive program is a good fit for you and your relationship. One of my favorite quotes from a couple on the weekend was, we came home with a new marriage. Yes, which was really incredible to hear. And one of the funniest questions, well, I, I, mean, I guess it's not funny, but one, the one we hear often is, do I have to talk about my relationship with other people on the weekend? And you people absolutely so, do not. <laughs> so scared of that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, t it's time for uh, hanging out with your partner, not other people. So that is not a thing. Yes, think about it as a reinvestment of energy into your relationship. And as you reinvest, the relationship becomes so much better. Rejuvenate. Rejuvenating. Mm -hmm. Rejuvenate is a good word. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested in, you know, saving your spot uh, for this upcoming weekend intensive, because again, we are limiting mm -hmm. spots. Yeah, we found that the integrity of a smaller group was absolutely essential. So we are limiting it again. So not going to be a lot of spots, and they're probably going to sell it pretty quick. Right. So you can go to couplesynergy.com and click on under the experiences, the weekend intensive. It will take you right to the page about the weekend intensive, and you'll be able to register, register for a meeting with us. So now back to the topic yeah. of everything's going great. Why should I work on my relationship? Or how do you? Or where can you? Or why would you? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we used this example last night when, when podcasting this couple. And you, I think this is a really good example, using the example of a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And if someone broke their leg 
and they now needed to learn how to move again and ambulate, they're going to go to a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. And if they went to a personal trainer, they would have to learn how now to increase strength in their, in their leg. Mm -hmm. It's a very different type of work than someone that is going to a personal trainer because they want to run a marathon or do an Ironman competition. So you're saying that professional athletes have personal trainers? Yes, they do. You think about all professional athletes, all of them. They have coaches. They have personal trainers. They have people that help them become even better than Mm -hmm. where they're at and to constantly improve, right? Because if you continually do the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. And one of the things that also came up on the weekend, someone said, we got to have the conversations we didn't even know we needed to have. And that really got us thinking about, you know, in our life and in the lives of the couples we've worked with, you only know what you know. You know what you were taught. Yep. And for most people, what they were taught about relationships come from their caregivers, Mm -hmm. right? Whoever raised you. And that, those messages about what a relationship is, how it should be, maybe they weren't directly told to you, but you observed them. You observed how your caregivers interacted and what they did in their relationships. And so that becomes your template for a relationship. So when you think about what you learned from your parents and if they were divorced from your parents and your step-parents and other relationships that you observed, is that what you want for your relationship? And if it is, are you having that relationship? Because it's a whole different thing to learn one template as a child and meet another person that learned a different template and then try to merge together because ultimately what you're doing is you're creating what we call the couple personality. And that's the synergy, right? The synergy is these two parts are coming together to create a new thing. A new thing that is greater than the sum Mm -hmm. of those parts. Or it can be worse than if it pulls each other in the wrong direction. You could pretty much uh, count on your partner coming into the relationship with a completely different template than yours. For sure. I mean, even if you have the same demographics, you still are going to be brought up very differently than your partner. And so when couples are coming together, it's not a his way or her way. It's an our way. And that is that takes a lot of time and energy and effort. We always talk about that in terms of like ballroom dancing or figure skating pairs. You know, each person is a great figure skater. or Each person can be a great dancer. But when they come together, they still have to learn those subtle things, the nuances, the the little differences. Even in like if you think about that example of dancing or figure skating, there's going to be a different body. It could be a different height or a different length or something, you know, there's just something you have to adjust to. And those are the kind of things that is the work is how do you get really good at moving through this world in a way that is safe and compassionate and healing and absolutely beautiful to share your life with someone who wants to share their life with you. And when you talk about moving through this world with your partner, it is a moving target. It's constantly evolving. And if you are not working on your relationship with your partner over time, then the relationship is bound to deteriorate. It just is going to happen. Because if you are not growing, then you are dying. Right. And if something happens in life, which of course it does... You have to pivot. You have to pivot when you have a baby, when they leave the house, when you change jobs, if you move, if someone gets sick, if someone experiences a loss, 
life will continue to happen. It'll continue to put things in your path that are there for your deeper knowledge and understanding of yourself and how you support and relate to your partner. So when we get back to this this topic of the relationship template, we had this discussion with that couple. And, you know, they came from two households that were not very successful in having well, healthy relationships. they were both relationships. divorced. Two divorced households right. mm-hmm. they grew up in. And it, it, was a, it was a very interesting conversation because they ultimately said that they learned what not to do. Mm-hmm. But they didn't learn what to do. Right. And as young people, because they were in their early 20s when they decided to get married, and they sat down and they really, really, really talked it out, which you don't hear of that much. No. We didn't do that. No. I mean, we had some conversations, you know, about Mm -hmm. kids and, you know, what we were going to do in our relationship moving forward. But yeah, I guess we did do that, but mm -hmm. we just didn't do it as formally, I guess, as they did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of couples are not having those kind of conversations. No, most couples, they are sliding into these relationship decisions and not really planning Mm -hmm. their vision and planning their future course. Or or talking about the vulnerabilities or the fears or the non-negotiables and setting up, you know, what's appropriate rules for us. Because every relationship is different. Right. I mean, you could move forward and just copy what your parents did. Mm -hmm. And if your partner is okay with that, (laughs) compliant with that, then you will just be duplicating your parents' life. And that may be okay for your relationship. If both you and your partner are okay with that, maybe they came from a a household that, that didn't have very healthy uh, boundaries. And so, you know, they are okay with kind of merging with what you were taught, and that's okay. Well, if you think about even like the youngest person that would be getting married today is probably 18, 20 years old. I mean, there wasn't really even, well, there wasn't social media yet. There wasn't, there was a lot Thank of God. things that. <laughs> That their parents, if their parents were whatever age they were when they were raising them, would not have had to deal with that we have in this world we live in now. Right. So there wasn't the social media. There wasn't um, immediate access to everything all the time. I think cell phones were fairly new in the early 2000s. And so there's so many things that have changed so rapidly. Yes, including relationships as mm-hmm. we know it. Relationships now, a relationship with a committed partner are much more difficult than they ever have been because there are so many more factors that are involved. You just mentioned social media. Social media gives you a lot of information, not necessarily the right information, but you're bombarded all the time by what people are saying is correct. And so if you grew up without a template or the template that you were exposed to is not a healthy one, and now you're trying to create a healthy template for yourself in your relationship, there's so much out there that you could just be exposed to that might be taking you in a wrong direction in your relationship. I'm listening to you talk and I'm thinking all of this stuff is unconscious. I mean, you don't sit here and think I was taught a specific way how to be in the world. You just experience the world. And, you know, if you're listening to this, can you even come up with what you think your template is, what you really learned, what were those messages and lessons? And maybe even like the parents didn't even fight in front of you so you don't even know what that looks like or they weren't affectionate in front of you or lots of things that you weren't even privileged to and you would just get maybe a feeling that there's a problem or a feeling that your parents are giggling on the couch or whatever it is but you don't really know 
And it's sort of all this unknown stuff. And as we mature through life, those are the things that we get to contemplate more and more. And we finally get to feel our own feelings and start to say, is that what I want? Does that work for me? Well, I, I think we, we should contemplate those things and how we were raised and what messages about relationships we were exposed to, whether directly or indirectly. But most people... I would say most people, it's in the past. And so they don't really think about it. They don't really take time to ponder about, was this message okay that I was given? And am I replicating the same message now? And what do I want to, you know, resonate with? Yeah, I just think about when you go and you want to get information from a financial planner or a new accountant or a different doctor, they're going to go through all these assessments and they're looking for, well, where are you and what are your goals and what's the health of your habits and all those kind of things. And they're going to ask you questions you didn't even know that you should be considering because they're experts at what they do. Right. And working on your relationship is the same way. And we're not talking about work on your relationship because something big has happened. You know, there's a, there's a great pain or you're so disconnected that you're close to divorcing or something like that. We're just talking about, hey, we've gone through this. We've created this life. It's pretty good, but could we do better? Do we want more? What more is there? And where do you go to get an assessment like that to say, hey, you know, bring all your stuff and we're going to talk about you know, what you're doing, what are your habits, your relationship habits, your uh, deals that you made, your decisions, and have that reflected back to you of, wow, you know, if you tweak this here and there, if you learn this, you could really rock this thing. I think using that example of a financial planner is a really good one because there are a lot of couples out there that don't even want to touch their finances. They don't want to have a conversation about it, and they are just kind of surviving moving through life when it comes to financial decisions. And if you did go to a financial planner, you would have to take a look at the choices that you're making and whether it's actually beneficial for you. And that is a hard thing to look at sometimes. But if you got the information, if you learned about different ways that you can tweak things here and there, that's, that's really where you feel more in control of your life. And that's when you can actually co-create together and feel like a unified team versus adversaries. Right. And, you know, I was just think about, you know, you're never pleasantly surprised. Oh, look, we have so much more money than I thought we had. <laughs> or I haven't weighed myself in a while. Wow, look, I lost 20 pounds. <laughs> well, it's usually not a pleasant surprise. Well, one of the things that the couple said after we were done podcasting them was that, you know, we're really glad that we did this. This was a wonderful experience because for them, it was confirmation that they were on the right track and that they were doing all of the right things to nurture and, and grow their relationship together. Because we were able to give them that feedback. Right. Yeah. And so they got some perspective, which made them feel really proud and really happy. And most couples, you know, first of all, if you're listening to this podcast, you are already someone that wants more, that wants to do better, that is trying to learn more and improve yourself in your relationship and grow. So already off the bat, you already want that. And maybe you're in a relationship where maybe your partner's not doing that with you. And those are the tricky things, and that is part of why the weekend is so great because you don't have to go to therapy, and you don't have to be with other people and get vulnerable, and you get to learn all those great skills sort of by you're in the room with other people, but you're still in your own bubble. And it's a really safe way to do things that doesn't require the commitment that it takes and the vulnerability that it takes when you're in the couple-to-couple -couple program of really diving into personally what's going on in your relationship. It's 
more like taking a class in finance as opposed to going to a financial financial advisor. Advisor, yeah. Yeah, you know when we're we're talking about having couples on the weekend intensive, we're we're not talking about having couples that are going through a very severe trauma or something that has really disrupted their relationship to the point that they're almost at the point of divorce. No, that would be actually inappropriate. That would be like having the broken leg and going to boot camp. <laughs> like it's going to ask you to push yourself harder and you can't when you're in that place of of uh, a wound. Right. And there's a lot of healing that has to happen and foundation work that has to happen before a couple can get to that place of working on the relationship. So you know, that is why we do a consult with any couple that wants to attend the weekend intensive so that we can make sure that it is a good fit Mm -hmm. because maybe they need that more foundational work and we have other programs that would be able to help them with that. And I think, you know, I know one couple we did that with and they really wanted to do the individual work and we're like, we're not seeing it. We're seeing that you need the weekend. Everything's really good. But you both are really kind of stuck. And if you did the weekend, that's going to help you have this, you know, add fertilizer to the soil so that you guys start a growth process again. And it was absolutely that way. And that's, we don't know that until we meet a couple. That really speaks to a lot of the work that we've done in learning about relationships and having worked with countless couples over 20 years and being able to see the spectrum, you know, of a couple that may be really, really in trouble, you know, to a couple who has just gotten to a a glass ceiling that they want to break through and they want to reach that next developmental stage, you know, in their happiness together. And for us to be able to assess where they're at and to be able to understand what tools, what programs would be best suited for them where they're at. And I I just love our work because we can attend to so many different challenges that couples have gone through and are going through in their lives. But one of those challenges is always to figure out what is the template that you were taught and what is it that you are going to create? And how do you look at that? Like, what are those, what does that mean? You know, like when you go get blood work done and they tell you this range, that range, this level, that level. And if you've studied that and you're a doctor, you know exactly what you're looking at and and the levels of the indicators of if that's good or not. And you know what the patient needs to do. Right. But the patient doesn't know. Right. Yeah. And, You know, as human beings, what we tend to do is we tend to be lazy. We we like the path of least resistance. And so if things are kind of okay, we get more lackadaisical instead of making sure you're investing appropriately in your relationship and doing what we call good behavioral, good relationship behaviors, which I don't think a lot of people even know what those are. Well, one of the activities that we do on the weekend intensive is geared towards understanding that template. And that is something that you could do with your partner, just having a conversation, you know, in the quality time or face-to-face time, you know, that we encourage you to always have together. But during that time to have conversations about what was it that you learned growing up about you know what it means to be a man in this world what it means to be a woman in this world what does a healthy relationship look like and what does healthy conflict look like just understanding where your partner came from and being able to express and share where you came from it will give you both a very different perspective because What you know now about your past is very different than what you knew about your past 
a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago, because as we are growing, as we are developing in our relationship, we start to make connections to our past that we were not able to make before. And having that conversation with your partner is one way of starting that developmental process of creating that template that both of you want together. We like to think about this as uncovering and unfolding. So one is uncovering the things that you're kind of doing automatically and looking back and seeing how did I learn that. And then the unfolding is, and this is a great question you should ask your partner, you know, sit down that face-to-face quiet time, ask them if they're happy or if they're just accepting. And do that in percentages. Like what percentage of you is really happy with where we're at and what percentage is just accepting where we're at? And what would you like to change? Because even the home you live in, you upgrade. You, we are always upgrading everything around us, all of our apps. <laughs> our apps, our phones, yep. our cars. Mm-hmm. We are always looking for that, that new technology, mm-hmm. right? the next thing. you know, Faster, stronger, better. Right, but even in the, using the example of, of maintaining your house, you, you have to attend to your house. You have to maintain it. You have to upgrade it. Otherwise, it just it falls apart. It goes into you know disrepair. Yeah, because this place is a place that we're not going to survive. And so it takes more effort to be alive than to let go and start to die. And that's just that's just how it is. That's just life. You know, you have to move your body to keep it healthy. You have to eat. You have to you have to do stuff. If you do nothing, you're going to die. Right. And that goes for even healthy people. 100%. Healthy yeah. people. All bodies. Healthy couples, healthy relationships yeah. still have to change, improve, grow. And that is the crux of being in a living relationship, you know, commitment to a partner and you are growing together through life. So if you're listening to this with your partner or if you're listening to this by yourself, have that conversation. Ask your partner, say, when can we sit down and have a real talk about how we're feeling, how we're doing? You know, let's just check in. So we want to thank you so much for joining us today on Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. It really, really helps us. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couples Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, again, coming up in September, our online membership called Connections, and our premier program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And there you can also find the recap of the weekend. It's a cute little video that was put together and some of the testimonials of the people that were on the weekend. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez. Mm-hmm.